Hello, everyone. This is Tim with Online Big Blue bringing you the best in New York Giants sports talk and entertainment. We are now up to part three of our series, The Free Agents. Who should the Giants go after? Now, the problem that we have here is the fact that we don't have a coaching staff yet. We don't have a philosophy. We don't have a head coach. So what we need to look at are players that can help the team no matter who they bring in. So the first one we want to take a look at, and it's not the sexy pick in the world, it's offensive tackle Jack Conklin, Michigan State, four-year pro. He has been a, he is um, he's uh, how big is he? He's like six foot six, three hundred twenty-eight pounds. Mammoth tackle, someone that could help the offensive line right now. He is durable. He has played 57 games out of 57 games. Now, he did get hurt last year in Game 9, so he did not play a full season, but he did play three full seasons. Um, I should say he played two full seasons, then he got hurt, then he played a full season this year as well. The best thing about Jack Conklin is not only could he solidify the line with Will Hernandez, but the Texans have declined his fifth-year option. Now, they did not decline this fifth-year option because of the fact that they thought that Conklin wasn't a player. They are only at about $30 million under the salary cap. So it's almost to the point that their loss could be our gain. I liked him coming out of Michigan State. I always thought he would be a pro's pro. He has started since day one. He is durable. He is a road paver, and he knows how to pass protect. I think Pro Football Focus had him listed as the 26th, I believe, um, top offensive lineman last year, which to me is something that we need. And like I said, it's someone that we can – you know, we can build a line around. He, he's 26 years old. We bring, keep Hernandez. And now, we, with John H. getting hurt, uh, the center, um, in the Eagle game, Terry's Achilles, he's out all year. Um, so we still need to find pieces in the line. We still need to think about what we're going to do with Nate. But between him, uh, between Conklin and Hernandez, I think we have two great bookends that we can use right now to help improve the line and help give not only – Daniel Jones protection that he needs but also take a look at you know paving the road for our buddy Saquon Barkley now one of the other players I would really love the Giants to go after is Dante Flower Jr. now I have Dante has always been a uh, favorite of mine Um, I'm a Florida fan Um, I, I was I was pumped in 2016 when he got picked up excuse me 2015 when he got picked up by Jacksonville Uh, If you recall, in 2015, he missed the entire season with the knee injury that happened in uh, training camp, or right at the start of training camp, he had just signed this contract, or or I don't remember, I don't think he actually had a chance to sign a contract, he was out there um, under the insurance policy. Uh, but he, he was hurt that year. And you know what it is to me? He is Leonard Williams who can actually get to the quarterback. He is Leonard Williams that... <laughs> That he we don't have to count the almost sack. Um, he had some rough starts in his times in Jacksonville. He's, you know, he's also kind of a knucklehead. Um, and I have some friends that still live in Jacksonville, so you know they, they, they tell you some of the stories about him at night and stuff. You know, out and about. But I'm not going to get into those stories because, like I said, they're all hearsay and rumors. But on the field, you know, in Jack, especially in Jacksonville. You know, he 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 kind of he meandered around. You know, his first uh, full season, which was in '16, he only had uh, 32 combined tackles and four sacks, and he bumped it up uh, playing again 16 games. But he only had a combined tackle of 21 tackles and eight sacks. It wasn't even a full time starter. And it was in 2018 when Jacksonville got rid of him and sent him over to the Rams. You know, he still even on that year he only had four sacks. But I I, I laugh, but you know that that's still doing better than Leonard Williams. He can get to the quarterback, and that was last year, or I should say 2019, which is last year now. You know, he had a combined total of 58 tackles, you know, and 11 and a half sacks. Okay, he's he's Leonard Williams with a pass rush. He plays the run well. He also had six pass defenses, so you know what? While he can play with his hand on the ground, he can also fall back into coverage in the linebacker position. I mean, he is listed as a linebacker. But at 6'3", 265, he's pretty much an undersized end, which is what we could use. We could use that pass rush. Now, if we sit there and we keep Marcus Golden on the other side, 
And then we have Lawrence and you know, we have Lawrence in the middle with BJ Hill and Tomlinson and rotating our, you know, you know, Jimenez and rotating our other players. You know, we can actually generate, I think, a pass rush and get to the quarterback. Now, my thing with Dante is, like I said, he is a little bit of a knucklehead. And you you run the risk of bringing a knucklehead. <laughs> now, I also heard some stories about him coming out of Florida. So, I mean, um, again, they're all rumors. But do we want him to bring him in to the New York lifestyle? Now, if you take a look at it, he was in Los Angeles. So you're basically, you know. You're basically in a large city as well, but you know he he potentially. The good thing about Leonard Williams is he's pretty much a stand-up guy, and you know he's pretty much an upright citizen. Dante Flower, I think you you know I think you're going to get someone that's going to have a lot more ability to get to the quarterback. He's probably going to cost more than Leonard Williams, but he has he has a resume of getting to the quarterback. Um, and he has a resume of actually, you know, like I said, you know, uh, of playing well on the line. Uh, we also had two forced fumbles last year, which was fantastic. But like I said, you know, it's it's you take you run a risk with him, but I, I think the risk reward factor is going to be is going to be worth it. I mean, it. You know, in some ways, it's um, you're, you're paying for the talent that's there. Leonard Williams, you know what we're getting. You had five years of Leonard Williams. You know what he is, and that's all he's going to be. Dante Flower is going to be – he could be literally the X factor. I mean, he could literally turn around – and put together a 15 sack season, or he could turn around and put together a six sack season. So we're kind of throwing a crapshoot out there, but I think the talent level has always been there. He is only 25 years old, so you know what? Yeah, I I think it's more risk reward with him than more than anything else. Now, the one thing I also want to stay on to is again is going to be uh, defense. Uh, Corey Littleton. Corey, of course, is a linebacker again with the Rams. We're staying. We're staying with the Rams. He's only twenty six years old. He is uh, he, not only can Corey play the run, he can also cover. He he has incredible coverage skills. He he. I mean, he makes. You know, he he's he, he's he's Revis compared to Alex Oldertree. <laughs> I mean, uh, so you know, I mean, it's um, it's it's he can he can help us with the run, and then like I said, then he can also drop back in the pass coverage, which is fantastic. Now, you're not going to get much more out of that. You know, in reference to he's not going to be a big pass rusher. He did have four sacks in 18, three and a half sacks in 19. But he did have 125 tackles in 18 and 134 uh, last year. Um, so, like I'm saying, you you are getting a guy that is going to you know play on the ball. He's going to be good in the box, and he is going to be able to cover the tight end coming out of the backfield. He is, in some ways, to me, Antonio Pierce, but with a better resume. Now, people probably don't remember that. When we signed Antonio Pierce over from Washington, Ernie Acorsi was, again, looking at Antonio Pierce in reference to talent, not production on the field because he had only been a starter for a very short period of time. He was looking for potential talent, and now we know how that worked out. Now, like I said, uh, Corey Littleton, he has the talent. He has the size. He is 6'3", 228. So he could play on the outside. He can play. He mainly plays in the interior, but he can play on the interior. He can't play on the outside. Um, he, like I said, right now he is a tackling machine, and these are you know, like eighteen and nineteen were his first two full seasons as a starter. So you know what? To me, the ceiling for Corey and our defense. Our our problem with our defense is <laughs> we need we need any we need linebackers we we need linebackers we need any kind of linebackers but we truly need linebackers. Um, now again, he's going to be someone on the market that's going to be you know that that's 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 really going to draw interest. But you know what? I think you know it, it's the same thing with Conklin. We could blow any team out of the water right now with an offer to Conklin. We we can destroy the Titans any offer they make because of their salary cap issues, and it's going to be the same thing with the Rams itself. So you know we need to see 
again, we're, we're looking at this time we're looking at talent that is already there and talent that's already proven. So, like I said, unlike when we did with Antonio Pierce, we were paying for talent that was perceived. This is talent that we have right now. Now, one other player I wanted to look at, but I'm not, uh, I'm not seeing it. But you know what? Javion Clowney. I, I loved him in the Steve Spurrier defense over in South Carolina. I've actually got to see him play a couple times in person. I've met him a couple times in person. Uh, great guy. Um, he, he does have some injury issues. He's 27 years old, and I know some of the doctors in the league think the arthritis in his knee makes him more like 37 years old. But as an edge rusher, can we get any better? I mean, that's swinging for the fences. I mean, that really is. But he can also play the run. He can get to the quarterback. While his stats over with the Texans were not phenomenal. You didn't look at his stats and go, "Wow, you know, with, with JJ Watt on the other, JJ Watts on the other side, you would think that he would have, you know, more sacks." Um, it didn't really work out. It didn't really work out that way. But you know what? It, you know, sometimes you need to leave a situation to go to a new situation for your talent to really flourish. And I and I think that is really what happened to him when he got traded over to Seattle. Now again, my my question is: Is that something? I mean, he is going to cost an arm and a leg. I mean, there's there's no doubt about it. But the problem is, we need to kind of worry. Um, how is how are his are how are his knees going to hold up? I mean, he only played you know he, he eleven games out of thirteen with Seattle. You know, he still had 31 tackles, three sacks. He he actually had three pass defenses and interception. And actually, that interception went for a touchdown. But, you know, it, it, it is the arthritis in his knees that concern me. He's never had more than nine and a half sacks. You know what? I've are, I've are, you know what I've done? I have changed my mind and I have talked to myself out of clowny. Um, I would like, like I said, I like to see him because I like him personally and I, I like him as a person. Um, but you know what? I, I, I'm not. I'm. I, I just talked myself. You know, the knees worry me, um, and, and that's. Um, and I think that's going to be a ma- that's going to be a major concern. Now, the, you know, there are a couple other players that we could take a look at, but like I said, I feeling that the players that I've mentioned would be a good building block for the Giants. I, I think that would be a good start in free agency, and I think that could help us. Uh, help us, you know, considerably. While the free agent class coming up is not that fantastic, um, and if you take a look at it, it's really not. I mean, it's it's top loaded, uh, but I mean, I I can't. Um, I'm looking at the list right now. I I can't see anything that stands out at me besides the players I've talked about for the Giants. I'm like, oh wow, you know, that that's something that we. Um, that we really need to go after. I mean, there there are a lot of role players that we can go after, but like I said, these I think are the players that I personally feel that can come in and help the Giants immediately. So um, I think we'll get a better understanding. I'm just going through the list again. I think we'll get a better understanding once we get our coach in place and once we turn around and figure out what our actually figure out what our. Uh, whole philosophy is going to be so but um like i said those are players that i am taking a look at and again this is tim with online big blue bringing you the best in new york giant sports talk and entertainment and thanks for listening